Hi there, so today, uh, which is turning out to be a really snowy day in Denver, I'm going to be uh, putting up the fifth video in the handcrafted railing um, series. And in today's video, basically what I'm working on is uh, the uprights and uh, for the banister. And I'll show you how I use the uh, tenon cutting tool uh, to do that. So it's getting a little bit more interesting. Appreciate your patience on all the floor work that we've been going through for the first couple of videos. Uh, but now with that done, um, the progress should be coming a little bit more quickly. Uh, so I look forward to uh, any comments or thoughts you might share. And uh, here's the video. So we're at the stage now where we're cutting the uh, log supports. I had talked last time about putting down two extra bolts to support that project for the supports. So I have done that and now have cut a log to fit in that new support. Again, that hole is going to have a bolt coming up from the bottom to fit into the log and then um, bolt that because we want that to be secure since that's the end of the banister. And then I've got a second one cut, and this is a little bit more unique. Um, this is a um, burl log from Alaska that we had gotten actually from my wife's parents who had been up there a couple of years ago. I think they probably bought it at the Naughty Pine store, which is a little store probably about an hour uh, east out of Fairbanks on the main highway if you've ever been or driven to Fairbanks, you've probably passed it and probably have stopped because it's a very unique shop with all sorts of gifts, but some special wood products as well. So we've got the burl sanded and it's a little loose right now, which is fine because it's just in here to see how it fits. Um, but we have basically one more log to cut for the upright support and that's going to go here at the end of the banister. And then the next step will be to start working on the top of the banister as well as putting in the metal work into the actual banister supports down here. So what I'm working on now is making the uh, log uprights for the banister. And the first step is to cut these tenons. Now this is an example of a finished tendon, tenon, T-E-N-O-N, that has been sanded and smoothed. And on the other end is what the tenon looks like after it has actually been cut. So this is the raw version of the tenon that I will need to saw. The tool that I am using to cut these tenons is pretty cool. It's a tenon cutter. I'm using an inch and a half uh, drill. And the tenon cutter is this big bell-shaped device on the bottom and basically if you can get a look in here I'll get that into the sunshine you can basically see that what it's got on the side here is a cutting edge and this the, the uh, drill obviously is rotating this and as the drill rotates that cutting edge it cuts to the shape of the tenon and it's a little hard to see, but down in the bottom of this, there is a bolt. And that bottom bolt is adjustable, um, so I can determine how long I want the actual tenon, the male part of the tenon, to be. I'm, I'm using inch and a half right now, but it can go all the way up, I think, to about two or three inches. But that's the device that I'm, I'm using to cut these tenons. This tenon is for logs up to, I think, about three inches. I have a smaller tenon cutter that's for really fine, um, small log work, um, but it's basically the same principle. Um, it's quite honestly, it's a booger cutting some of those tenons. I have to have my wife help me to basically hold the log in the uh, jig, because otherwise the whole jig starts to spin with the tenon cutter. The tenon cutter, this aluminum piece, with the steel blade in it, probably I'm guessing about probably at least five, perhaps even more, maybe even as many as six or seven pounds. So it's got a mass to it. When it starts to rotate, it uh, takes everything with it. But that's what I'm using to cut those tenons.
So here we have that uh, third upright that I was working on outside cutting the tenons this morning. I've got it sanded so it should be basically all ready to go and uh, it turned out fairly nicely. The other two uprights are also loosely in place. Again the roll log on the right from Alaska and then the other upright from um, the pine. So the next step is going to be cutting the notches into the little supports on the bottom as well as these will be also on the top um, supporting downward um, the metal grating so that's the next step so but this is the tenons in place and uh, how the banister is starting to come together so so this is a quick view of potentially what it's starting to look like I've got the four foot section of the metal grate uh, just loosely in place on the railing um, but it gives you a feel for what the look is going to be uh, once it's done. Again what I was talking about is I now have to cut the using a router a one and a half inch cut in each of these bottom sections that will actually be holding the metal railing into these bottom supports and they'll also be on the top of the railing once I have the top of the banister in place as well. So um, this is just a quick snapshot of again what this railing is potentially going to look like as we move towards completing it at some point. So what I'm doing now is simply marking the upright supports for the metal railing for the lines where I will be um, <clears throat> using the router to cut a one and a half inch gap so that the metal will be um, dropped down again one and a half inches into that upright support. So again just cutting the or putting the marking lines for the supports on both sides of the um, metal railing um, so I can go ahead and cut those. 